What's going on guys? Today we got this Ford F-250 Super Stroke Turbo Diesel Super Duty Farm Truck. Man, is it dirty! Got some bug guts, got some dog hair, got some mud on it. We're gonna clean it up and make it look real pretty. Ah! We're gonna start pressure washing this thing. This is my brand new Pressure washer AR Blue Clean. This is the first time I'm using it. Excited to use it in the garage. Um, I'll do a full review video on this pressure washer after I get some time under my belt, but super excited. It's an automatic on off. Pull the trigger, turns on. Release the trigger, turns off. Super excited to use it. Let's get this thing started. All right, so spending about four hours trying to get the pressure washer working, getting the right fittings. I don't have the right fittings. One, the hose was broken. <sighs> Fuck, there's a big old fucking hole in it. Stage just keeps on getting fucking better. On the pressure washer that I had, I had an old hose from a couple years ago. Didn't know that it had a puncture in it, so I uh, went and got a new hose, and then I didn't have the right fittings to connect the hose to the pressure washer. I started at 8.30 this morning. It's one o'clock in the afternoon, so I gotta get going on it. So screw the pressure washer. I'm going the old style, the old hose way. This is pretty dirty. It's gonna be a little tougher with without a pressure washer. But we'll get it done. <laughs> I'm starting the initial wheel cleaning with the Meguiar's all-purpose cleaner diluted to four to one just to get the first layer of mud and brake dust buildup off. These front fender walls are fabric material and cleaning them with the garden hose proves not to be very effective. I have to get the right connections for this pressure washer. This is my angry face. Update, cleaning the wheels with the regular garden hose sucks. So I went to the store for the sixth time. I think my neighbors think I'm insane if they've seen me driving back and forth. I know the people at the hardware store really well now. <sighs> Pressure washer should be working. Let's get to this. It's two o'clock in the afternoon. Now that the pressure washer is working, we are cruising right along. The inner part of the wheel, the barrel, has a solid buildup of iron particles, so I use CarPro's IronX to dissolve all that and get these wheels looking sweet. <laughs> By the way, if you look at that number right under our channel name, you're gonna see that we are so close to 100,000 subscribers. Help us get there by pushing that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Also, in the description below, you're gonna see a link that we're giving away a $500 gift certificate that you can use at Car Supplies Warehouse to purchase detailing tools and products. Click on that link to enter. Someone sent us this awesome wash mitt to test out. I'm gonna try it out today. I'm not sure who it's from, but uh, I'll find out and I'll tell you in the voiceover as I'm washing this. Feels like I'm washing the car with like an animal. 
like a little cat. This mitt is from Easy Products USA. It's a 100% authentic lamb's wool mitt. This is a really nice mitt. It feels great, super soft, but, you hear that but? It's a $32 mitt, and that's the sale price. Now, I have no problem paying that for a nice wash mitt, but, there's that but again, after using the wash mitt, I feel like I would only be able to use this wash mitt a few times before it's trash. Every little piece of garbage gets stuck in wool. And this mitt is not machine washable. And it also left pieces of wool and all the trim and the badges, which is slightly annoying. So normally this would be just a one day job, but with everything that went on with the pressure washer, the broken hose and finding the right pieces, getting them hooked up, we got a pretty late start on the truck. I did get it prepped. I spent some time vacuuming out the car, getting all the dog hair removed so we don't have to fight with that. But now it's time to get to the detailing process of this project and it's sprinkling out. I don't know how you mobile guys do it outside here. I miss my shop. Secret key. Huh. That's awesome. For the leather seat cleaning, I'm using Dr. Beasley's Fine Leather Cleanser and my favorite leather cleaning brush. And these seats are perforated, as you can see. And a quick easy tip for you detailers on cleaning out the little holes that sometimes get crap stuck in them, just use your air hose and blow them out.
All right. Everything is clean. I vacuumed the carpets again, and I just kind of sprayed a light all-purpose cleaner on the carpets and rubbed them with a damp mic microfiber. They didn't need much since they're covered with those rubber floor mats. Uh, everything's nice and clean. Now it's time to protect everything and uh, give everything a nice uh, layer of this Dr. Beasley's leather cream and Dr. Beasley's plastic conditioner. I'm gonna put the plastic conditioner on all the, the dash, the doors, all the plastic areas, and I'm gonna use the leather cream on the seats. I really like this because it conditions everything. It makes everything look like a matte finish. It doesn't have that greasy look to it, and it leaves everything looking brand new and smelling good. Love them. Let's do it. All right guys, we've pulled the truck into my garage or as much as the truck we can get into the garage. And I wanna do the test spot in here so I can see what results that we're gonna get. And uh, this truck is a farm truck. We're not trying to make it perfect, but I do wanna get the most correction that I can out of doing just a one step polish. So I did a test here where I taped half and half and I'll show you guys the before and after. What ended up working the best is this Lake Country HDO heavy polishing pad, uh, it, and then I'm using hyper polish with it. The paint's actually not that bad to begin with, but uh, for the results that I'm looking for, I want to give my customer the, the most value that I can. So I want the most correction out of the one step, and this seems like it's gonna be a ticket. I also did a test spot up on the B pillar up there, which it's, you can see that it's not perfect. There's still gonna be some deeper scratches in it, but I think the customer is gonna be really, really happy. Uh, with the results on this. I'm actually gonna pull it back outside because there's not a lot of room in the garage here and it's a cloudy day so we don't get any direct sunlight so that'd be nice. Uh, this pad here, uh, the Lake Country HDO pad, it's a little stiffer, it's weird to work with. Um, you do gotta work with it a couple panels and squeeze it and push it and pull it and everything and then it does soften up and it's a little easier to work with so let's get through it. using Car Pro Metallic Cut on all the chrome, including the exhaust pipe, which had a buildup of something of, I don't know what it was, but I didn't have any steel wool available, so I improvised and I used a clay bar with the Metallic Cut as a clay lube, which surprisingly worked fairly well. The 
last step on this farm truck is to protect it. And before I lay down that protection, I'm gonna use Meguiar's Surface Prep. And I'm going to use a new product that I've never used before, and that is Turtle Wax's Ceramic Spray Coating. They sent this product out to me a couple months ago, and I think it's about time we give it a try. Now, this is a spray ceramic coating, which is different from a traditional ceramic coating. The difference is the amount of SiO2 ceramic in the product. In any ceramic coating spray, there is only a small fraction of that main ingredient. You won't get the thickness or the durability of a normal ceramic coating. This spray coating is one of the most difficult spray coatings that I've worked with. If you're not working in small sections or really making sure you're fully wiping off all that product, you're gonna end up with streaky spots on the car's paint. The fact that this was a little more finicky to work with probably means that it has a higher concentration of the SiO2, which is great for durability, but it does kind of suck to work with. A little bit of tire dressing and some glass coating and this truck is done. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you next time.